listen. Those 60 degree cylinders play off each other like a jazz band. Feel that lightened crankshaft spools up like a super sport. But if I take away your ears and take away your hands, what do you see? And what you have is a stylish motorcycle. I think it looks trick. Oh, wow. Lovely bike, lovely bike. It's funny how motorcycle discourse is always technical and analytical, except when it comes to aesthetics. Do we lack a language for beauty? I bet if I brought out the most beautiful motorcycles ever made, we'd be blind to them. The Honda Dream 50, commemorative model, limited production, impractically small, to a significant extent, this is meant to be art. Like the Layacon, which was benchmarked as preferable to any other production of art since the time of Christ by OG Pliny the Elder. Why? It's a carved rock that got so overgrown in some dude's vineyard it was lost for a thousand years before Michelangelo dug it up in the 1500s. And the only notable thing is that Pliny wrote about it, and that it has this weird serpentine curve. This weird serpentine curve. This weird serpentine curve. This weird serpentine curve. Which came to be known as the line of beauty. What I'm trying to say is that our tastes develop arbitrarily. And motorcycling, the form that stuck, for whatever reason, is the bone line. A continuous stroke from tank through seat. This line also has its roots in antiquity. A straightforward form, born from straightforward function. Though you'll find it everywhere even projected onto modern aero packages for no other reason than to convey beauty. Successfully, I guess, this Ducati 916 is commonly named the most beautiful motorcycle ever made. But is it still because our Indian FTR has a bone line too. Only here it's not contrived from plastic creases. Oh no, this line is painstakingly engineered by making the tank the same height as the seat. To do that, we sacrifice much fuel capacity, moving it under our collective butt which incidentally creates a rock bottom center of gravity that handles on rails. And yes, that also means this tank isn't a tank at all. It's an enormous air box sitting right atop the throttle body so our FTR can gulp enough oxygen to make 123 horsepower. Air here, gas here, is the same arrangement as a MotoGP bike, and that's something to be proud of. In fact, Indian boasts about it in a classically artistic way. 1656, Velazquez paints a Spanish princess. But in doing so, he also paints himself at work on the painting itself, which is revealed in the mirror to actually depict the king and queen. Because Velazquez is the court painter, and that is something to be proud of. 1929, Magritte paints a pipe with the baffling subtitle, This is not a pipe. I suppose that's true. It's not a pipe, it's a painting, and that's something to be proud of. And in 2015, Robert Ryman sells a white square for $20.6 million to show that he can crap white onto a white canvas in a white museum and people will pay for it. And that's something to be proud of. See, artists revel in themselves through their art. So too engineers can revel in themselves through their engineering. Notice how the tank is bisected, and this graphic alludes to two distinct panels, which of course is exactly what they are. Indians engineers are saying, look, sissy, this pot and tank, it's an airbox, like in MotoGP, and that's something to be proud of. 
Remember when Suzuki stuck that weird rounded dash on the RE5 to show off their success at engineering a weird round rotary engine? The Suzuki Rotary, powered by the rotary engine. The result of the total resources of Suzuki. Or when they trimmed a radiator in chrome and color to draw attention to the GT750, Japan's first ever liquid-cooled motorcycle. It's like that, and it's beautiful. While this is not, the katana is striking and venerable to those of us in its cult, but largely thought to be a bit ugly. See high, low. Smooth, sharp, square, triangle, circle. Katanas have no cohesion. And there's a chunk of motorcycle here, and here, and here, but none of it flows together to create a singularity of form. Yet on the FTR, we can draw one continuous line from faux tank to seat to real tank to pillion handles to tail light. In the same spirit, there's no suspension linkage, so the angle of the shock can match the angle of the trellis frame whose webbed steel is matched in turn by the trellis swing arm and trellis plate hanger. The latter being so hilariously over-engineered, it only makes sense as an exercise in cohesion. Even the trapezoidal sight glass is designed to recall the trapezoids that define this trellis chassis. As with one, so with the other. Symmetry can make a bike look right even when you don't recognize what's happening. Check it out. Our bone line hits the top of the airbox graphic and perfectly bisects the headlight. Then this is exactly parallel to the wheelbase. I can draw another dominant line, upper swing arm, shock, upper frame, through the iconic Indian eye and terminating at the gold stanchion upper, similarly lined up as the lower swing arm, pivot, header pipe, and gold stanchion lower. Now watch. This angle is identical to the angle of free space above the front wheel. This angle is identical to the free space above the rear. Then if I draw out the wheels, we have exactly three and one quarter across, exactly one quarter down from the ground clearance, and exactly one half up to the motorcycle's crown. Only designers are meant to notice such even proportions, yet all riders can tell when it's done right and when it's done weird. A final point, the 1934 Galamberti. Elegant, but not seen as one of the great beauties because it's almost never seen. This is actually the only Galamberti to have escaped the scrap heap because functionally the bike sucked. Similarly, the 1977 XL Cafe Racer. Oh. It's fizz-inducing, designed by Willie Davidson himself with the ass grabbed off an XR750 race bike, but never a proper beauty because it just never raced properly. So if we know the FTR has a beautiful flat tracker form, does the function follow? Well, that three and one quarter proportion makes for a long wheelbase, which will step out rather than lift the front. And that trellis swing arm flexes, absorbing energy like a spring and returning it progressively through the slide. Our low airbox makes it easy to ride forward and weight the steering wheel through a drift, while our heavy underseat tank keeps the weight so low we needn't fear high sides at the limit. Remarkable, everything that makes this bike beautiful is also what makes it slide beautifully. It might be the best looking motorcycle because it looks best sideways.
Tschüss.